Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Christ Gospel Church. We're the little church where the Bible is the guide and the Holy Ghost is the director. Good morning, Christ Gospel Church family and friends. Welcome to our first ever online Youth Sunday service. I am Sister Chantella, the Youth Ministry Director here at Christ Gospel Church. Well, without further ado, we want to jump right into our Sunday School Nugget this moment. I know you've been waiting for it. Brother Green. Good morning to my youth, to all my CGC family. Uh, my name is Brother Green and I'll be doing the Sunday School message for this morning. This morning we'll be coming from Joshua chapter 24 verses 1 through 28 and this is a story about how Joshua, um, he was a descendant of Israel and he was a young man who God um, gave him a word for the people. Um, the people at this time had been um, just doing all types of things uh, that wasn't of God. They were living in any kind of way and, and they were doing things that God just didn't approve of. And so I believe um, that he was speaking to a younger generation, sort of like you, you young people today, um, because he kept using the term the forefathers and how the forefathers used to do things. And so we get to the point where um, they meet everybody at Shechem. And this was a place that he gathered everybody, the leaders, the chiefs, um, just people in the area at the time, because he definitely wanted to allow them to hear what God had to say. And so he began to tell them how they started to do things that was unnatural. They started um, worshiping idols and, and living any kind of way. And um, to, our, to my youth, this is kind of how we've been living. We've been um, using um, God as secondary. We've been putting idols in front of them and we've been doing things that God isn't pleased with. And so as you get down to verse uh, 14, he starts to tell the people um, that if serving the Lord is evil, choose ye this day who you will serve. And so young people, I put you on notice to say, um, who are you serving today? Uh, is it your, the God of your forefathers or is it the God that we know that has um, delivered you from um, different depressions or things that you've been struggling with in your life? And so as the people started to hear the word of the Lord, they started to understand that Joseph, uh, Joshua, excuse me, was uh, just bringing what thus said the Lord. And they started to change their hearts. They started to believe that the Lord will deliver them. And in Joshua speaking, um, people started say, saying to themselves in their hearts that I want to come back to the Lord thy God. Um, I want to be um, with this God who you talk about, Joshua. And so Joshua made the comment in the statement that um, I don't know for about you, but for as if for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. And so, young people, I challenge you today. Um, is Are you going to serve the Lord? Um, three points that I want you to get and remember. Uh, and one of them is to uh, receive the message. Okay, when the people came to Shechem, they could have been doing anything. Um, but they wanted to hear something from the Lord and they came and they received the message. Um, point two is, is are you going to commit to the Lord? Um, a lot of people there were saying, uh, God, I know that uh, the things that I'm doing isn't of you, but I have to make a conscious decision to choose who I'm going to serve. And last and um, most importantly, not forgetting what God has done. Um, 
as Joshua was talking to the people, he reminded them of how good God was, how he had delivered them from um, Egypt and, and all the things that he has done. And if you can ask yourself, what has God done for you? I'm pretty sure you can say that God has delivered you as well. So again, as we go through these points again, number one is to remember what God has done for you. Um, remember how God has blessed you. He's kept you. He's kept you in your family. He's done things for you that you probably would never even imagine. Um, point two, receive the message. Um, again, when you come into church, or, or there's so many things that God is trying to tell you right now. And because we have so many things that's in us, sometimes it's hard to get the word and, and get the message that God is trying to tell you. So simply just receive the message. And last and most importantly, commit your ways to the Lord. Commit and, and tell God that, hey, God, I know that you're there. God, I know what you've done. And so because I know that you love me without a shadow of a doubt, I'm ready to serve you with my whole heart. So I just thank God this morning for all the things that he's doing, for how he's moving in the church and the things that soon to come. So just continue to pray for our church family. Continue to lift us up and we will be doing the same for you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Brother Green. That was an awesome word this morning. That challenge that you issued us will cause not only the young people to think, but again, some of us older ones too. Are we up to the challenge? Have we accepted him and ready to move forward in Christ? Now that Sunday school is over, we're going to head right on into service. But before we do, would you mind bowing your head with me for a quick word of prayer? Lord, we just thank you for yet another opportunity to come before your presence, Father God. We thank you for life, our health, and our strength, Lord. And as we move on in service, we ask that it will be what you'd have it to be. Allow us to see what it is that you'd have us to receive from your word today. In your name we pray, amen. Now we're going to ask Brother Dimitri if he would come with this morning's scripture. Brother Dimitri. Our scripture today is taken from Psalms 100. Let us read together. And it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endureth to all generations. Thank you, Brother Dimitri. What an awesome job you did. We're going to now go into our special announcements for the week from our bishop. They will be brought to us by Sister Kalia. Sister Kalia? <laughs> Good morning, Christ Gospel family and friends. It is Sunday, April 26, 2020. I am Kalia with your special announcements. This morning, we have two special announcements from Bishop. Bishop Leonard is reminding us to keep studying. Did you know that studying is a responsibility for every child of God? Paul reminds us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, to study to show thyself approved. Therefore, continue to complete your schoolwork. Do not allow yourself to get behind. Bishop is also asking all CGC youth to connect with an older person while practicing social distancing. You should call or text an older person in or out of your family or community and let them know you love and miss them. And if you can't think of anyone to connect with, ask your parents. This concludes our special announcements. Have a great week, Christ Gospel family. Thank you so much, Kalia. You did an awesome job, as usual. You know, here at Christ Gospel Church, we have so many talented and wonderful young people. The Lord has blessed them with so many gifts, and we are so thankful that they choose to utilize those gifts while in service to Him. So this morning, we're going to ask Sister Janessa if she would come and remind us that through all that's going on, the quarantine, the COVID-19, the being safer at home, Jesus is at the center of it all.
Wow, what an awesome, beautiful voice the Lord has blessed you with, Sister Janessa. Thank you so much for rendering that selection this morning. We're now going to move into the Word of God. This morning, I believe Elder Moore has a super fantabulous word that's designed just for you. So let's get our paper, let's get our Bibles, our pens, and let's get some understanding. Elder Moore. Good morning. Hello, my name is Corey Moore. I am one of the elders here at Christ Gospel Church of St. Petersburg. Today is a great day. Uh, why? Because we woke up this morning. We're in our right minds. Uh, it's a great day today. God has been so good to us. He's allowed us to be here this morning for us to all worship together. Uh, today, the topic that the Lord has given me this morning is embrace the space. Embrace the space. We know this global pandemic that's going on and it's hitting everyone. But God is still saying that it's important that we need to embrace the space. The topic this morning is one that would hit everyone from our youth, from our adults, because we all deal with space. Amen? The scripture text this morning would be going from Exodus chapter 14, and we will read from verse 13 to verse 14. Again, the book of Exodus, chapter 14, 13 through 14. And it says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Lord, for the things at times that we deem to be little, the ability to walk, to talk, to taste, to, to comprehend, to feel. We thank you, God, just for your spirit and your presence. Now, Father, have your way, Lord. Allow us, God, that in all of our getting for us to get understanding, Father, hide me behind your cross. Tell the text to the time in which we live, that when we leave, we shall be healed, delivered, and set free. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, quickly, a historical background is the children of Israel are in bondage. During this time period, young people, Pharaoh is the one that's in control of the people, uh, uh, the cattle, the land. All of this is his in Egypt. The Israelites are in bondage and he is their overseer. Things are not good for them. Of course, when you're in slavery, uh, they, have, they have no control over uh, anything. Their, their, their goods, their, their homes. Pharaoh is in control. So when Moses walks into his calling, Moses comes to Pharaoh and Moses delivers a message from God that God says, let my people go. And this, in essence to our topic this morning, he's saying, Pharaoh, God is saying, give my people some space. Space is very, very, very important. While attending the best school in America, the Lakewood High School, one of the classes that we had to take was driver's ed. In driver's ed, one thing that we had to learn was the two second rule. And that you had to allow two to three seconds between your vehicle and the car in front of you. And the reason for it, it they wanted to make sure that you had adequate space in case you had to move, in case there was an abrupt stop from something in, in, in front of you, uh, it allowed space that you were able to even see down the road. So even in this, in, in this thing that we had to learn, we see even in our lives that at times God provides space for us in order to see. A lot of times you really can't see well if you're so close up onto something. With this space that God has given us through this, this pandemic, 
it gives us an opportunity to look at our relationships, to look at things that we've allowed could be to clutter our space. So let's take heed and let's continue to invade with our space. Okay. So Pharaoh, let my people go. Give my people some space. So guess what? God frees the people. Okay. He hardens Pharaoh's heart. Okay. And he frees the people. So guess what? As time as time goes on, the people leave. Pharaoh gets in his feelings. Okay, and he, he's upset. Now he wants his people back. So now Pharaoh begins to go chase after the people of Israel. When the people of Israel realize, okay, in verse 10 before that, that he's chasing them, they get afraid. Okay, so even our first topic today, our first point is, number one is, fear not. When they see the fact that Pharaoh is chasing them, they're afraid. Not only are they afraid, in verse 10 it says that, that when the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, and they saw these Egyptians coming, it said, the Bible said that they were so afraid, and they began to cry out unto the Lord. See, one thing about fear is, fear paralyzes you. Fear also can put you in a bad position because sometimes fear can bring up emotions and things that are on the inside of you that you have not dealt with and then they come and now they blow up in your face. So fear is something that God doesn't want us to be afraid. He wants us to trust in the Lord. Okay? But number one, point one is fear not. Okay? Point number two is stand still. Okay? Okay? So it says that to stand still, that means that you have to be firm in your beliefs. You're going to have to trust somebody. Though this time period, and you may say, well, you know, coach, we're not in class right now. What am I going to do about my grades? Uh, is it going to be football season in the spring? Kind of what's going on? You're going to have to stand still and trust God. No matter what has gone on in your life, you're going to have to believe that God Okay, is your head, he's your hero, he's your Lord, and he's your Savior, and he's going to take care of you. Okay, so the children of Israel, they had to stand still. They had to, to, to be confident in God was going to do this. But guess what? They was whining, and they was complaining. Okay, matter of fact, they begin to tell Moses, hey, listen, why did you just leave us in Egypt? Weren't there graves in Egypt? Why are you taking us out of slavery. What are you doing? See, sometimes you can be caught up in mess, okay, so much that you make that mess your home. You become comfortable being in something that God has never chosen for you to be in. God never chose them for them to be in slavery and to be in bondage, but it got comfortable for them. See, sometimes the thing that God thinks that God has for us is uncomfortable, but sometimes He's trying to make us stretch. He's trying to make us reach toward the things that God has for us. But we're going to have to be able to trust Him and we're going to have to be able to stand still. Okay? Then the, the point three is, see the salvation of the Lord. You're going to have to wait with expectation. Knowing that God is going to do something miraculous, miraculously and amazing in your life. You're going to have to fear not. You have to stand still. You have to see the salvation. What are you waiting for? God can do it, but do you believe it? Do you trust Him? He's there for you, but you're going to have to trust Him. Now, the big question I want to ask you is, we talked about space. We talked about embracing that space because we all have been allotted space. But my question for you is, what are you doing with your space? What are you doing with your space? As the children of Israel begin to get to the Red Sea, God tells Moses, hey, listen, look what's already in your hand. Lift up your hands and I'm going to part this Red Sea. So from the time period of him parting the Red Sea and for him in the time period of him raising his hands again and him closing up the Red Sea, what happened during that time period? What happens and what's happening in your time period of space? Do you know, uh, which is also uh, a national pandemic, is heart disease, diabetes, 
Obesity. Do you know that one of the ways an individual can have a heart attack is not having blood flow in their arteries, in their veins. If the blood cannot flow through the space that's presented, then there lies a heart attack. If the blood can't flow in your life, in your emotions, in your reasonings, you're setting yourself up for a spiritual heart attack. God wants your space, but we have to evaluate our space. Young people, look at how much time we spend on Facebook, okay, text messaging, Twitter, and there's nothing wrong with that. But anything out of balance can hurt you. There's a time and there's a place. But I understand, I know you all have better video games than uh, we had when I, when I was younger. Okay, and that, oh, that's great. Continue to, to have fun. But don't forget God within your space. God wants to be there for you, but you're going to have to fear not. You can't be afraid. Two, you're going to have to stand still. That means you're going to have to trust. And number three is see the salvation. You have to wait with expectation. Do you know that the enemy wants to attack your space? God wants you to have space, but the enemy wants to attack your space. Use this time period of space that God has given you to gain momentum in this space so that when, when, when things do kind of get back in order, you're better, you're smarter, okay? You're, you're stronger, you're, you're faster, you're, you're, you're more eloquent in your, in your speech and in your, in your word of God and you've called that loved one. You've called that brother that so you've mended relationships within this time period. Use that momentum to break through generational curses. But this is a great time for you to be better. Uh, coaching football at Lakewood High School, one of the things that I understood and I had to realize that my kids are at their best when they're rested. When they're rested, they're, they're, they're more in tune, they're more focused, their body is firing on all cylinders. Why? Because they're rested. Could it be? God is saying during this time period, you need to take some rest. You need to sit down somewhere and get some rest. A soldier is at his best, is at his peak when he's rested. Do you know how much damage you can do to the, to the enemy when you're rested? But let's be honest, when we're not rested, we have a bad attitude, but maybe that's just me. When I'm not rested, I'm not too good to be around because I'm, I'm aggravated. But God could be having us an opportunity to get rest. Sometimes the best things happen when we're rest, when we're asleep. You know that Eve was pulled from Adam when he was asleep? Yeah. Do you know the, the, the most the, the smartest man and the most wisest man in this world? Solomon. He was giving us information while he was asleep. God could be talking to you right now in this space. But wherever you are, God wants your attention, but you can't be afraid. You got to stand still and you have to see the salvation of the Lord. Understand this, the enemy is not omnipresent. He is not all powerful. He is none of that. So what he does is he allows you to, or he allows us to bait ourselves up by paying attention to things that we shouldn't be paying attention to. So, because the enemy cannot create thoughts in our mind, when we look at things and we're drawn from our own lusts, he pulls on those things and he allows those things to intercede on his behalf. Places, people, objects. In this time period of space, the enemy could be manipulating, and knowing him he is because he's attacking the space, but he could be manipulating things just to get closer to you. He couldn't get through Eve, so he had to use a serpent to get to Eve. He couldn't get to Adam, so he had to get into Eve to get to Adam. So be cognizant, stay focused, use this time to get better. God bless you, but I want you to think about something real quick. I want you to think about five seconds, and I want you to think about when your space is done, where are you going to be? 
Because as we keep reading, you also see that there were three characteristics of people that was flooded when that flood came down. You saw the chariots, you saw the Egyptians, and you saw the horsemen. Do you know that chariots also uh, held officials, those that would speak on behalf of the king, those that would intercede on behalf of the king? But those people, those characteristics at the end were all swallowed up. You don't be the one that the devil is using. They also had archers that was on the platforms of chariots. Okay, Don't allow the enemy to, to, to use you to not only start mess, but to carry mess. Because those people aren't going to make it at the end. So let's make good decisions. But for your eternal salvation, where will you be? Where will you be? Take about five seconds and just think about it. up is, well, Coach, what if, if what you're saying is not true? I said, well, guess what? If you were to believe what I was saying, what the Word of God is saying, and it's not true, guess what? You just die, okay? You're good. But what if what the Word of God is saying really is true? Now you're going to have to deal with eternity. Eternity is not a thousand years or even a billion years and it's over. No. Eternity is after a billion years is starting over. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9 that if that you should confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But you're going to have to confess. You're going to have to admit something. Lord, I got issues. Guess what? We all have issues. So, and don't allow what you see in the community or, 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 or the church. It's not about the community church. It's about your salvation. You and God is here for you. We all have issues. The Bible says that in Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have issues. On your best day, you still got issues. So we need him. But guess what? The same way an individual goes to work and they get a paycheck, guess what? If you're not saved, Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God is waiting for you. Wherever you are right now at home, watching TV, in the car, wherever you are, you will never forget this moment because God is knocking at your heart. If you are not saved, I want to pray with you right now. Forget about what's going on around you. Forget about what you have on, whether you're at home. Forget about what's cooking right now. And let's just focus for about a couple seconds. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Lord, Forgive me of all of my sins. I admit that I am a sinner and I need you. Come into my life. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and I know that you love me and you care for me. Be with me, Lord. I need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are saved. And don't let anybody else tell you differently. You being saved does not mean that you're not going to have issues. If you like chicken before you got saved, you're going to like chicken after you got saved. But God's going to be with you. But now you have help because you cannot do it by yourself. Christ Gospel Church is an amazing church. And you need to find you a church home. If you're looking for a church home, Christ Gospel Church has what you need. We have adult ministries. We have Bible studies throughout the week. We have marriage counselings. We have a beautiful music department. We have youth ministry, grandparents ministry. Uh, we have everything you can think of. We have mental health counseling. We have an amazing bishop, bishop who loves the people. We have an amazing bishop that's in our community. Have an amazing executive pastor who's, who's very active in our community. Our youth minister, uh, Sister Moore, 
Amen. So all of God's people, he, he has a, a, a base at Christ Gospel Church. If that's where you want to be, at the end of this broadcast, you'll find information about how you can join our church. But you need to go somewhere and you need to get give up on someone's teaching. God has a message just for you. Amen. If you're going to need prayer throughout the week, at the end of this broadcast, we also will have the church's number where you can call. We have a, a great, powerful uh, Mother Hughes and some, some of the other mothers and the other people of God. And they get together and they pray. And we need prayer. So if you need that prayer, if you want to get saved, if you want to know more about God, you want to know more about Christ Gospel Church, at the end of the broadcast, we have that information for you. Be blessed, young people. Let's have us a great day. Remember, embrace the space. What will you do with the space that God has given you? Number one was fear not. Number two was stand still. And number three was see the salvation of the Lord. God bless you. What a wonderful word this morning. Thank you so much, Elder Moore for reminding us that we need to embrace the space. And sometimes that may be hard, especially because many of us are practicing the safer at home or we're having to complete our online assignments and not being able to return to our actual physical school buildings. If you haven't had an opportunity to do so just yet, we want to remind you that it is important to bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse. So if you're looking or still need to pay your tithes or you'd like to give a special offering or you just want to donate to our particular ministry. The information to my left contains the various methods in which you may do so. We thank you for each and every one of your uh, monetary donations. Well, that's about it for service this morning. We thank you for joining us. Service would not have been what it has been if you had not decided to join with us this morning. So we're going to ask the Lord to continue to bless and keep each and every one of you as you travel through the rest of your week. God bless you. See you next week. Thank you for watching. We appreciate your financial gifts. You can mail in your financial gifts to Christ Gospel Church of St. Petersburg, 2512 22nd Avenue South, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33712. You can also drop off your tithes and offering at the church today between 2.30 and 3.30 p.m. There will be a team in place to assist you. Thank you for watching The Little Church, where everyone is welcome. Where the Bible is the guide and the Holy Ghost is the director. See you next time. Bye-bye.